Hi, I'm Carmen, and I'm going to be talking about certification today. Uh, this is joint work with these wonderful people, uh, Guy Blanc, Caleb Koch, Jane Lang, and Li Yong Tan. So let's get to it. Um, all right, what's our motivation here? We want to explain the behavior of black boxes. What does that mean? Uh, we have query access to some unknown function f. We put it in x. Um, this black box spits out an f of x, and we don't know why. Um, so our goal is given a specific input, a specific input x star. We want to explain why f outputs what it does on um, x star. Uh, there's um, a lot of interest in answering this question from the explainable machine learning community. Um, you can imagine why it might be um, interesting for machine learning people. Uh, machine learning models are often quite opaque, and so being able to come up with simple explanations for why a model does what it does could be quite useful. Um, we focus on local explanations, meaning we explain F's behavior on a specific input, X star. Uh, contrast this with trying to explain F's behavior in general. Uh, we just care about the, the local X star. So in this talk, we'll be giving new algorithms and lower bounds for this problem. Uh, there are many ways to formulize this problem, so we'll just be giving one. Uh, we will be using certificates as explanations. So here's the formal definition we'll be using. Um, if there's a function f uh, and an input x star, a certificate for f's value on x star is a set s of coordinates of x star um, such that uh, if f, if um, y and x star agree on these coordinates, then f of y and f of x star should agree. Uh, in other words, fixing the coordinates of s to match x star should render the function constant. So if we're using certificates as our explanations, naturally we want a simple explanation or equivalently a short certificate. We write cert sub f of x star to denote the size of the smallest certificate for f on a specific input x star. And we define the certificate complexity to be um, cert of f uh, to be the maximum of cert of um, sub f of x for the worst input x. So it's the length of the shortest certificate for the worst x. We're taking a maximum of a minimum here. So some background on this problem. Um, certificate complexity is extensively studied in complexity theory as it's a highly natural measure of Boolean function complexity. Um, it's studied in learning theory and there are classic algorithms for finding small certificate for a restricted set of functions given by Valiant and Anguin. And it's also um, highly relevant for explainable machine learning, as I said before. Uh, here's a small example of certification. Uh, suppose you have an algorithm that decides whether an image is a dog. So you can see our input x star is this picture of a dog and the function is spitting out, yes, indeed, this is a dog. Um, so here is a certificate S for S value on X star. You can see it's just a subset of the, of the input bits of X star, the input pixels in this case. Um, and so you might imagine that this, this black box F doesn't care about the background. It only cares about like, the dog's head and that's enough to and a few other details, and that's enough to determine that, yes, this is in fact a dog. So um, just to illustrate further that this is a certificate, we can change the other pixels uh, however we want, and it still will be a certificate. We, will, um, we can put the dog underwater, and it's still a dog. We can put the dog in, in a gym, and it's still a dog, uh, and so on. 
So now we're ready to formally state the algorithmic problem that we're considering. Given queries to a function f with a certificate complexity less than or equal to k and an input x star, we want to output small certificates for f's value on x star. And here, by small, I mean size poly k. So here's what I've just said. Here's what I've just said illustrated. We have an input x, a black box f, um, and we're able to make queries to that. We're given a promise that its certificate complexity isn't too large, and we're given x star. And all we want to do is output size poly k, uh, a size poly k certificate s for f's value on x star. So the bad news first. Forget trying to find a certificate. Even checking whether a set s is indeed a certificate is co-mp complete. So say that you've been able to solve our algorithmic problem. And you said, yes, I, I have this poly k certificate for f's value on x star. Even checking whether or not you've actually solved the problem is Cohen P complete. Also, assuming P is not equal to NP, we cannot efficiently find a certificate of size V of K for any growth function V. So forget poly K, think of V as two to the K to the K to the K. Uh, no matter how rapidly V grows with K, um, we still can't find a certificate of that size. Um, so given intractability, what do we do? Prior work has focused on circumventing intractability by making assumptions on the function. In particular, um, they've made the assumption that the function should be monotone. So Valiant and Anguin um, give simple and gives a simple and efficient algorithm for monotone functions. And more recent work, uh, BKLT and Gupta Minaj had um, also studied monotone F, but they achieve um, optimal query complexity. So why is certification easy for easy for uh, monotone F? Um, why is this such a useful assumption to make? First, uh, it's easy to check whether S is a certificate. So as I said before, in general, this is co-NP complete. But for monotone F, um, let's suppose F of X is equal to one. The argument's symmetric if F of X is equal to zero. We can simply um, fix, fix the coordinates of S to agree with X and set all other coordinates to zero. Then if this still equals one, by monotonicity, no matter um, how we set the coordinates outside of S, this will always equal one. So all we have to do is check this one input where we've set um, all of S complement to be zero, um, check whether that equals one. And if that's true, then S is a certificate. So in this way, monotonicity changes a Cohen P complete problem to one that we can check with one simple query. Next, minimality suffices. So what do I mean by that? Um, a minimal certificate is one where if you drop any coordinate, it's no longer a certificate. Note that a minimal certificate is not necessarily a minimum certificate. There could be a very short certificate that involves um, entirely different coordinates. You can think of um, minimal certificates as local optimum, whereas the minimum is the global optimum. Um, in general, there can be a minimal, a minimal certificate with length that's practically n, um, even though the certificate complexity is order log n. So in general, you can have really long minimal certificates and still um, be nowhere clear, close to what's optimum. Um, so why is minimality sufficient for monotone functions? Um, again, we're gonna suppose that f of x is equal to one. Um, 
uh, and suppose we have a minimal certificate S. Note that S has to contain all ones because if it contained a zero, we could drop that uh, we could drop that zero from the certificate, and it'd still be a certificate by monotonicity, um, and that would violate minimality. So any minimal certificate contains all ones, and similarly, any minimum certificate will also contain all ones. So S might not be a minimum certificate for this input that um, I have on the on the left, but replace everything outside of S with a zero, and it's still a minimal certificate for this new um, input X star, but now it's also a minimum certificate for this new X star. Why is that? Um, a minimum certificate must be all ones, so it must be a subset of S, uh, and any strict subset of S is not a certificate because S is minimal. Uh, thus, S is the minimum certificate. So we've seen how useful a simplifying assumption like monotonicity is for this problem. And we've also seen how intractable the general problem is. However, we'd still really like to understand general F because real world examples aren't always going to be monotone. They might be arbitrarily complex. So here we study um, general F. Uh, so for general F, we need some other way to get around intractability. We'll use an MP oracle. In the language of complexity theory, we study this problem's difficulty relative to an MP oracle. Uh, I'll be representing the oracle as the octopus that correctly predicted results of the World Cup. But if you prefer, you can think of it as a SAT solver instead. It's up to you. So here is the algorithmic problem revised to include um, our MP oracle. It's exactly the same as before, except that now, of course, we have access to an MP oracle to help us solve our problem. So we have two main results, a new algorithm and a new hardness result. First, I will talk about the new algorithm. So we're trying to find an upper bound here for the difficulty of this problem. So from first principles, let's try and figure out its complexity. As I stated before, the problem is not in P, assuming P is not equal to MP. And I also claim that it's pretty simple to see that um, this problem is in MP to the MP. We can simply guess a certificate and use the MP oracle to verify that it is indeed a certificate. So there's quite a gap between P and NP to the MP. So how do we figure out exactly where certification lies? You might think that the problem is NP to the MP complete. Um, its most natural formulation involves two quantifiers. So here I've written that out. There exists a set S such that f of x star is equal to f of y for all y that agree with x star on S. We have it, there exists and for all y. So you might expect, okay, maybe here we formulated this problem. It has two quantifiers. Maybe it's MP to the MP complete. Uh, our first main result counters this intuition and we give a BPP to the MP algorithm for certification. Next, we provide a lower bound for instance-wide certification. So what is instance-wide certification? Um, it's exactly the same as before, but we've replaced the certificate complexity with its instance-wide counterpart. Um, remember that cert sub f of x star is simply the length of the shorted certificate for x star. Um, before we were taking a maximum over all x, but here we just are considering our specific input x star. In contrast to the previous slide, this problem is NP to the MP hard. Um, and that's the, the major uh, result that we, that we proved. Uh, in fact, we show that third sub f of x star is optimally NP to the NP hard to approximate. 
So what exactly do I mean by that? Um, it's MP to the MP hard to distinguish between, yes, there is a uh, size K certificate for F's value on X star, and no, every certificate for F's value on X star had size almost N, uh, to be more precise, K times N to the one minus epsilon. So there are hardness results for higher levels of the polynomial hierarchy, but there are very few hardness of approximation results. And there are even fewer optimally hard to approximate results where we have this optimal um, ratio between the yes and no case. <coughs> Excuse me. This work, in addition to being interesting in the context of certification, adds a natural problem to a very, fairly small group of problems that are no, known to be hard to approximate in higher levels of the polynomial hierarchy. And that's all for me. Uh, thank you so much for listening.